Good morning, Magnolia. Hi, beautiful girl. Status report on the chicken nuggets. They are doing great. And I am happy to say that even our little sick chick, where is it, is doing great too. Let me show you guys. No gasping. It is doing so much better. It's actually back to eating on its own and drinking on its own. Um, it's lost so much time though. It's so behind because of that week where it wasn't eating well. I mean, look at the size difference between it and the others. It's like half the size. So it is doing great. Oh, hi, Magnolia. I know, pretty girl. It's doing great though. What I ended up doing was um, I actually ended up doing some research and I found something called Vet RX. And I started off giving it to it via dropper um, orally once a day in the morning and still continuing with uh, feedings and watering manually until I saw it eating on its own. And I let it rest as much as possible and I think it's made a full recovery. So I will leave a link to that um, down below, VetRx basically. Um, it's not an antibiotic, it's not organic, but it is a natural um, based um, medicine for chickens. Uh, as for respiratory health, you can give it as a preventative and you can give it topically, orally. Basically, you can give it in like various, there's all different kinds of applications for it. So I'll leave a link down to that down below in the description if you need it because he, he's made a full recovery almost. He looks so much better. He's active. He's eating and drinking on his own now. I haven't had to feed him in two days now and I'm really, really happy that we didn't lose him because there was a period where I was thinking we might lose him. But everyone else is doing good. They're munching away on their food, getting fat and sassy. Are you guys getting fat and sassy? Are you guys getting fat and sassy? Oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> Magnolia, you are doing so good. Yes, you are, pretty girl. So we're kind of on limited time today because it is supposed to start raining here at about 11 or 12 o'clock. Right now I think it's like, what, 8? 7.30? 7.45. Alright, so we're close around there. Um, we're about to head up to the pasture to feed, but um, I want to show you a couple things that I've got here at the house. We've got, as you can see here, this, this awkward, this odd box. This is actually the magnolias and uh, the chicken nuggets new chicken tractor that we're in the process of building. And it's kind of based off of the Joel Salatin uh, chicken tractor designs that he has, but mine's just a tiny bit smaller. I think his plans are a 10 by 10. These are more of like an 8 by 8. Um, I did use 2 by 4s, ripped them down, so to try and make it just a slight, just slightly light, which I think his plans called for, so I can easily drag it. It's still pretty heavy, so raccoons aren't going to be able to lift it up and get under there, but I can still drag it across. Uh, grass and move them regularly. Um, it's got, as you can see, it's got a little, this is the lid here, and uh, it'll be on a hinge so I can open it up and prop it up, but the basics of this design is that I wanted to minimize waste, so I used the whole eight foot strip of the 2x4, ripped it down, so I only needed four 2x4s to make the main frame, um, plus a little extra for these, uh, for the uh, braces for the beam, for the, what are these called, the, the leg, the legs, part of the frame basically around, and uh, so I, I'll have uh, probably the next video, I'll have the total estimated costs of that once it is done, and I know I have all of my framing out. Um, we had the hardware cloth left over from a previous, uh, from our trick, from our A-frame chicken tractor that we built. And uh, if you haven't seen that, it'll be up here in the corner, I believe. Maybe here. I don't think it's. I think it'll be in this corner right here, where we'll. Ha I'll have a, a link to that. You guys can go check out our A-frame. So far, it's coming along great. I've built this completely by myself. Davis has been working a lot of hours, so um, I've been trying to kind of keep up things here by myself and get stuff done so that he has less stuff that he has to do on the weekends when he's off, and I can kind of reserve things that I can't do by myself to have him help me with. So this is going good. Got a few more things to add and then I can start enclosing it in in the hardware cloth 
and then put the tarp over it because we want to keep it light um, and it's hot it gets really really hot in Florida so I can't use a, a tin or a metal roof they would just cook in there so um, we got a tarp to put over top of it and that'll offer them some protection from the rain and shade as well. Something else we got going on here at the house that we don't have out at the farm is I've got a few more things, a few things planted and growing here that I haven't shown you guys and I wanted to show you guys. So in this pot, you see the little greenery popping up? These are my carrots. Yes, I'm growing carrots in a pot. And um, I actually had these, these are uh, fabric planters. I've had these for a few years now and I, I love them. They're very handy. Um, I don't use them for everything, I use them for certain things, but um, I'm growing carrots and I actually planted the entire packet of nebula carrots, so there's like some, something of, of like 300 plus carrots in, in this one bag. So whether or not they'll actually grow all 300 is, is to, has yet to be determined. But the, so the soil is very, very soft and loamy, easy to move around. So they can, as they grow, they can spread each other apart and move around to what they need to get their spacing. I don't want to cut tops if I can help it, but we'll see. So I will leave a link to where I got these fabric grow bags in the description down below because I have actually been really happy with them. Another thing we've got growing here, these are coconut palms and I've kind of been on the fence with them. I haven't planted them out at the property yet because I just don't, I'm not sure where I want to plant them at. So I've got these, I've got four of these, then I've got blueberries, and these are also growing in those fabric bags that I just showed you guys. And they've been in these for about two years now, and I had actually got them about four years ago, and I neglected them, and they got grown over by weeds. They were actually planted in the ground in my first garden, and they somehow survived. I transplanted them into these, and they've been blowing up with blueberries all season so far. Look at these. Oh, there's one right there that's actually gonna be ready for harvesting. So I got majority of the biggest harvest already out of the way, there's, but there's still more coming in. Then I've got pineapple, some extra uh, dwarf Cavendish bananas that I'm actually planning on selling at uh, the next farmer's market I go to. Then something else that I'm really excited about, I, I tried out this year is we're growing potatoes in pots. <laughs> we're, I've, been calling them, I've been calling them my patats in the pots. So I've got, I, I just got these seed potatoes from Tractor Supply, it was kind of on a whim, but I've got uh, Kennebec, both of these are Kennebec, wait no, these are Kennebec, both of these are Kennebec potatoes, and then this is a blue Alderneck, it's a blue potato. And, oh, look, look, there's a new little one coming in. New little one. But so far they're doing good, so it's it just, it's just, if I can get them to grow in the pots, I've seen people grow them in the pots, it would just be so much easier to harvest them. And I've heard that they also pr produce more potatoes in the pots. So we'll see. We'll see how we do, if we can even get potatoes, as I'm excited to see. Then I've got, can't grow, if you're going to grow potatoes, you've got to grow sweet potatoes. So the last time we grew sweet potatoes, um, I learned that you don't want to let the uh, vines climb along the ground. And I think the reason is because the vines, wherever they touch ground, they'll send down roots and they'll continue to grow sweet potatoes and it'll, it'll just, it'll just draw more energy away, I guess. I'm not sure. So um, we actually use a tomato cage to let the vines grow up and over and it kind of gives it a little extra and then it can climb out and whatever happens, happens. Because if I'm correct, you don't want to cut the vines. You want to let them grow as much as possible. So we'll see. So far we've got new leaves coming up. So let's go ahead and get out to the pasture. So as you guys saw in the last vlog, we had moved the chickens onto the pasture and had taken them off of the garden plot. This is the next section of garden. So we've got, well we've already planted over here, and then this is the additional section of garden that we are going to be planting into. So we're going to plant a few more things today, and then we'll give you guys the full garden tour uh, with what we've planted as well today.
Ooh, it started to rain a little bit, so I had to put the camera up for a bit while we planted. But I got some more things planted in the garden, and we're gonna go ahead and do a walkthrough tour again, update on how things are doing, and maybe we'll harvest some things as well. So, strawberries, as you see, as you know, last time are doing great. Look at the asparagus, and I probably just need, because I need to heal, heal up the uh, dirt around them, but I mean, like, look at how big the asparagus have gotten. They've just gotten huge. I have a picture of Leon standing next to one of our tallest ones. This one right here. It's, it's taller than Leon is. Strawberries are sending off runners as we expected them to. Look at how full these are getting. They're doing great. They're just, and there's the runner sending out right now and this is gonna kind of spread across the entire bed right here. Oh yeah, see. <laughs> That's how tall it is. There's Leon for your perspective. He's got himself a worm. Show him your worm. Four worms. Oh, you got four worms? All those wormies. <laughs> and they're all crawling around me. <laughs> so, oh, let's see here. So, strawberries are doing excellent. And something. Oh, I just stepped on a marigold. Darn it. I just killed a marigold. No. Marigold oh, well. murder. Marigold murder. Oh, what happened to this one? That's interesting. I wonder if someone stepped on that and we just never realized. So, all right. Well, these marigolds. Oh, look, we got our first marigold bloom. Got it. Starting to bloom. Well, these are pretty. So, let's see here. So, the first thing. We got, look at all these squash under here. Let's go ahead and we will need to cut back some of this because this is starting to shade out our, this is our cherry. Yeah? Okay. This is um, one of our um, ground cherries and we don't want this to shade it out. So we're gonna just kind of, um, Leon, can you go get me some of those twisty ties out of the truck? There's a bag with them in there. We're gonna tie it, we're gonna stake this up and tie it up so that it doesn't shade out this ground cherry. All right, so in the meantime, let's go ahead and we'll harvest out some of these. Because when they're young like this, they're tender. So, let's see, here's one right, the big one, right there in the middle is what I'm gonna get. I'm gonna find its stem. I don't want to risk cutting off. Mm -hmm. It's like laying under there. It laid on top of it. There we go, yep, that's nice and yellow. I think this basket's gonna get be too small. <laughs> that is a wonderful problem to have. Any others? That one even looks like it's ripe as well, but it's so small. I'm gonna let that stay on the vine for a little bit longer. <gasps> Look at our zucchini coming in. Let's see if we have any zucchini to harvest. We have any zucchini to harvest? Oh yeah, we got a, a big boy. Look at that big boy. Let's find, here's the stock. I don't want to cut anything but that stock. There we go. Oh, it's so thick. All right, did I get it that time? There we go, wow. Look at that. That is a Cocozella di Napoli zucchini. Let me fit that in there. <laughs> Kind of takes up our whole basket. <laughs> All right. Look at this big old zucchini. Oh, good. You got the zip ties. And some wormies. All right, here, I'll go. Yeah, we'll use the zip tie. That'll be good. We'll make it big so it doesn't. And some wormies. You got some wormies? Okay, let me go ahead and try and 
Lift this one up. We got two of them that are trying to stretch out that way. Okay. Let me go ahead and break this up. Bring this up. There we go. Rotten leaves Zucchini. and broken leaves. So many leaves. I was trying to get the, away from the trying to let them be able to see what you're doing. That's fine, buddy. You're good. You can't really see past the leaves. Reviewers can't really see past the leaves. That's fine, buddy. Uh, All right. Huh? Oh, you know Where's what? Oh, uh, you broke off. You broke off her zucchini. No, it's a leaf. Oh. Um, All right. I need another zip tie. Can you go get me another zip tie? Or just give me the case. Okay. I make I'm making the camera my vision. Go and that should. Oh, you're up there now. Out, out. There we go. And we went ahead and harvested this anyways. Leon, can you gather up these leaves and go toss these to the chickens? Sure. They'll love it. All right. So, ended up harvesting an additional yellow squash, which we are fine with. What, buddy? I got leaf swords. You got leaf swords. <laughs> All right, so the watermelon is doing great, but we haven't had any that have properly pollinated, and I'm I'm thinking I might end up having to come in here with a paintbrush and manually pollinate these watermelon, which I really did not want to have to do, but it's looking like that might have to happen because we just we had a couple baby watermelons come up on it. And they never, they, they just rotted on the vine. See, here's, here's a baby. And it's flowering now. So, here. Let's see if we can get at least one watermelon. So here I've got a male flower. And I'm just going to try and dust some pollen on it. Alright, so it looks like i got a little bit on it, but... I don't have any paintbrushes out here right now, so hopefully that pollinates it. We'll see. So the the pumpkins are just doing phenomenally, and let's see if we can find that one pumpkin. So I had someone comment that I had pulled a pumpkin off that was had been pollinated. So I want to show you guys something. Let me see here. I've got one that I left on. So, and in, in, in their defense, it was, everything's very green here right now. But if you see, see this one's really rotting. But if you see a um, pumpkin or a squash that's growing that is yellowing when it's small, that one likely did not pollinate. So like, see here? That's yellow, but you can see the obvious rot, but you can see some yellow where it was. Whereas with, let's find one. This one's open, but it's green. You see how it's green? So if it's green and it's still growing, chances are good it got pollinated and it's good. So we've got this one right here that had gotten pollinated and it's growing beautifully. And then our first one, look at this. It's starting to, you probably can't see it all that well. Let me see if I can can't see it all that well on my camera because everything is just so green but it's starting to change to an orange color so that one will be ready for harvest soon so I'm just like Yee, first pumpkin that one's doing beautifully but they're just climbing 
And this is such a nice sh shaded, sh shady area. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> I am so happy with how this trellis came out. And we've got some, look, we got some loofah coming in. That is a baby loofah. Hopefully these are getting pollinated by the ants. Did you know the ants are also pollinators? They pollinate as well. So they are not a total pest in the garden, even though they bite you. They are beneficial. Let's see, and here's so more loofah. ants are basically double-edged swords. They are double-edged swords, you're right. And here are our purple potted beans that popped up. They're finally popping up and the older ones are starting to climb up. Look at how high up the green beans are growing. And we've got a lot of green bean blossoms coming in. This is the 1500 year old cave bean. And I think this is the first, it looks like this is the first to really blossom out. Look at those. They're so pretty. I love green bean blossoms and Davis's sweet peas are finally this is really really dark here Davis's sweet peas are finally starting to climb reach out they'll start to climb soon and then Daddy. they'll climb up this trellis Daddy. yep Daddy. Daddy. so at the front and I, I never talk about them but at the front of the trellis I had two extra Roma tomatoes and nothing was planted here so I figured you know what why not grow aroma tomato on the front and and just kind of like tether it to the front of the trellis and we'll have additional tomatoes why not so on these here soon are going to be getting trellised and i will show you guys how i'm trellising whenever i do that that's hopefully going to be this weekend so it'll be possibly in our next vlog but as you can see on this side they've just been growing but on this side I came in and I pruned up a bunch of the underside and eventually the bottom um, I'd say foot of stock is going to be pruned of no leaves just to reduce the splash off of the ground but look at this look at this look at this we are about to have our first um, that's a purple Cherokee purple our first Cherokee purple about to be starting to come in. We've got blossoms all over these right now. So I'm excited to get these staked up, but the tomatoes were just doing phenomenal. And even our uh, Amish paste, they're starting to play catch up. I still don't know what de made them delay and just struggle the way they did, but they are playing catch up and they're doing beautifully. Cherry, ground cherries. We got some blossoms coming in on those. Those are doing great. They're still got this, I'm not sure what this is, why the leaves are doing this. They're like curling almost, but then they're stretching out as they get older. If anyone can fill me in on that, that'd be most appreciated. So, and then look, we have some garlic. Gar I had planted it and I didn't think it was gonna take, but it did. So we have, we have some garlic along the row of the tomatoes growing. And then our dill that we transplanted, it's starting to go to seed which I'm okay with, I don't have any qualms with that. That was just a bonus herb. The cabbage and the onions, the onions are doing great. We've got the bulbs on this side and the bunching on this side. And the bulbs have just shot up. They're starting to get bigger than the bunching already. So I have two different varieties. I've got um, Corda Blue, I think is what it's called cabbage down here this is an experimental cabbage I've never grown this before so this was something I just planted four heads of and then down here from here on is the all-season cabbage and then we've got our new two new rows here so on this side planted alongside the cabbage we've got kale spinach and Swiss chard and we're about we're expecting rain here any time now so I was like let's go ahead and get some seeds planted on this side we've got okra finally got some okra in the garden and I'm excited I like pickled okra I like fried okra so I'm excited to finally grow okra and this is just Clemson spineless it's nothing fancy it's a pretty common variety it's a very popular variety so we're excited to have these finally so that's what we got so far we still have plenty more things to grow and start 
Um, really happy that we at least got this stuff transplanted. I still got more seeds um, sitting at home in the packet still. <laughs> and uh, I still got some new starts. I've got peppers that I'm currently got starting. I finally got them to pop. I don't know why I had such a difficult time getting them to pop. I've never had trouble germinating peppers, but for some reason this year I'm having immense trouble. So peppers will soon be going in. Tomatoes are gonna to start getting trellis soon. So big changes are gonna be coming to the garden, including finishing out spreading the mulch that the chickens didn't spread and getting the rest of the things planted in our garden. If you want to see, we have a live that we did discussing all the things we plan on planting. I'll link it up right here in this corner and you can check it out. I think it's this corner. Is that this corner or this corner? I can't remember. But um, this corner. It's this corner. Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. I think it's this corner. <laughs> it's this corner. So we'll see. And if you want to go check that out, it's discussing all the different seeds, varieties, where we got our seeds from. Um, and uh, yeah. So thank you so much for joining us on our tour, and we'll see you next time. Bye.